Here are some of my thoughts on the new version 2.0 Spiral Abyss, Floor 12. I actually forgot we were getting an updated version, so this run isn't optimized yet, but I do want to talk about some of the mechanics. First thing to notice is that we have an electro infusion node in the middle of the room. These infusion nodes buff all enemies every 15 seconds, and it gives them 50% resistance to all damage types. In the case of an electro node in particular, it also gives enemies an additional 50% resistance to Electro, for a total of 100% resistance to Electro. This means that you really don't want to use an Electro main DPS for this abyss rotation. When enemies are buffed in this way, they gain a purple glow and they also become infused with Electro, which as you can see, interferes with your ability to create specific reactions with them, which really hurts Vaporize or Melt Team compositions. You can dispel this Electro Infusion by repeatedly triggering elemental reactions with it. In this chamber, the last two samurai at the end must die within a short period of time, or the surviving one will heal himself when his counterpart dies. In Chamber 1 Part 2, I've decided to use Eula. Mihoyo really liked making the floors like this. The Fatui here are greatly resistant to Pyro, Cryo and Electro, and weak to Physical, so it makes sense to use Eula. However, in Chamber 3 Part 2, you face a Ruin Guard with 70% Physical resistance, and Eula will really struggle there. The upside is that this means that it's possible to tailor a team specifically to beat one chamber to get the 3 stars, then swap it out for something else later. In theory, you will need to time your Eula burst so it doesn't trigger during the Electro Infusion buff, which gives them 50% damage resistance. In practice, this Fatui already start at minus 20% physical resistance, and then they get another minus 40% from Superconduct and minus 23% from Eula's elemental skill. So even with the plus 50% physical resistance from the infusion, there's still a negative physical resist. Chamber 2 Part 1 is a really easy chamber, so I'll talk about the Abyss Blessing instead. This cycle, your attacks reduce enemy defense by 7% if you're at full energy. Melt Ganyu benefits the most from this, because she doesn't want her burst interfering with the melt reaction anyway. However, the team I'm using right now isn't entirely focused on Ganyu's charge shot melts. I actually prefer the extra protection and safety of using double geo characters on the team, even though it interferes with melt reactions. So I end up using Ganyu's burst on occasion. I found Chamber 2 Part 2 pretty tricky. Magu Kenki starts out invulnerable, so you can use this time to recover your energy. You can see my Eula regenerates her energy to full in a few seconds, which is nice, so you don't have to save energy from the previous floor. This enemy does a lot of damage, so you either need to time your dodges properly, or just build enough tank and healing stats. In this team, Eula's built-in defenses and interrupt resistance allows her to just tank the damage and Bennett will heal her up in a few seconds. This fight isn't that interesting either, so I'll talk about the floor 12 blessing. Every 10 seconds, the floor will switch between high tide and low tide. During high tide, you gain a lot of free energy particles, while in low tide, your characters cannot gain energy. Undoubtedly, there will be more strategies around optimizing your rotations for this floor in the coming days and weeks. You'll see that I waste one of Bennett's bursts when Magu Kenki dashes out of it. If I did this again, I will wait for him to dash before putting down Bennett's burst. Chamber 3 Part 1 is just a normal Ruin Hunter, and after he dies, a bunch of Ruin Constructs appear. Despite being level 100, they pose barely any threat to your character. 
many players will three-star this chamber without any issues at all. The main interesting thing here is that you get to see the effect of the minus defense applied when firing charge shots at the enemy while my gun used at full energy. The Geo Resonance from Zhongli's Pillar rises from 3845 damage to 4708 damage over the course of 3 charge shots, which implies that each charge shot applies 2 stacks of the debuff as it hits twice. That's a roughly 22% increase in damage. It might be worth holding your burst for a few seconds, rather than blowing it the instant you have the energy to use it. Again, we can expect to see some of the my strategies appear over the course of the next few days and weeks. Chamber 3 Part 2 is quite simple as well. It is just a normal ruin guard and a bunch of small ruin constructs. Only trick here is that their AI is similar to the Abyss Mage or Sisson Mage. They are normally immobile, but if you're too far away from them, they'll teleport to you. So when you begin that phase, you'll want to run to the one on the sides rather than staying in the middle. Despite Yula being at a bad disadvantage due to the Rune Guard's 70% physical resist, we get minus 40% from Superconduct and minus 23% from Yula's elemental skill, which brings it down to a more manageable 7% physical resist. One note about Eula's burst rotation here is that her burst doesn't snapshot, so you need to swap to Eula immediately after using Bennett's burst, so she still has the bonus attack when her burst explodes 7 seconds after she uses it. As mentioned, this run isn't optimized. With the gear level I have, I believe each floor can be completed in about 90 seconds at best. The enemies are definitely tankier than in the previous versions of the Abyss, and I hope we're not seeing the first signs of power creep in this game. Thanks and see you next time.